Hello, 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 and welcome back to another edition of Conversation 2. This is video lecture number 3. In this video lecture, we are going to be covering uh, the reviewing some of the contents from Unit 1, as well as um, probably get into Unit 2 a little bit. So hopefully this will be informative and not too painful. I am recording in the iFactory PC Bong now in Guang'an Beach near my home. My computer at home was just not uh, strong enough in terms of CPU. Uh, it's not a gaming computer. It doesn't really have a whole lot of RAM. So it was really struggling with the uh, the amount of processing that was needed to be done to record these videos. So I have moved to a PC bong. The computer is much more stable. And the only drawback is, is that there are quite a few people here and there you might hear some voices in the background. Hopefully you don't hear anybody saying any bad words because people do from time to time say a bad word in the PC bong. But you might hear a lot of people typing very quickly as they are killing dragons as fast as they can. So uh, that's kind of the drawback. But uh, I think that this will uh, improve the experience quite a bit in terms of the quality of the, uh, the video that I'm able to produce. So that's kind of good. Uh, if you have found this already, you've probably already uh, know about this, so I don't really need to go over the um, LMS system a whole lot. Hopefully it's working well. Uh, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic that it will work well. If you're having problems, try to watch the videos during the off-peak times. Probably Monday is not the best time to look at these. But I would like you to keep up with these each week as we go through, and I'm going to be checking to make sure that you are completing these assignments on time. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. One thing I wanted to talk about quickly is the lecture resources here under the lecture resource tabs. You can download the student book and the student workbook that you're going to need to, for, to complete these assignments on the LMS system. They are also available here on the class website at joeteacher.org to download here. So either way you can download those. Another thing I wanted to point out was that down here under textbook resources, this is section one, part one here, has a lot of, uh, of information from the teacher book. These are all of the, um, the answer sheets from the different sections uh, the, uh, from, the, from the parts that we're going to be going through. So if you want to look for some more information about the vocabulary, uh, all of the, the information from the teacher books are here, including the answers from the extra practice sections that I'm going to be giving you. So I'm pretty sure all of those things are here. These unit language summaries are very, very helpful. They, they show different modeling things. I will probably be giving you some writing assignments starting in Unit 2, uh, some short writing assignments. So you can use these... Uh, to model the words that you're, you, the sentence structure uh, that you need to write, plus all of the vocabulary, um, all of the expressions. There's a lot of different information in these language summaries for each of the units that we're going to cover. These are the answer sheets for the extra practice that I'll be assigning, and these are the language notes, the grammar summaries from the teacher books for each of the units that we're going to be looking at. So I think that these will probably be very helpful going forward as a resource. And those are all here. I put those all up here on the teacher website. I won't be putting those onto the LMS website. The important thing to note about the LMS system is that you need to complete all of these assignments. I'm not exactly sure how this works, uh, but I think that you need to at least look at all of the things and in order to, uh, to complete each week's assignments. 
I'll be checking on that more as we go forward. I'm still kind of figuring this out myself, so I appreciate your patience with me as we're going forward and we're uh, kind of learning through this together. So let us begin. I want to go back and look at Unit 1 a little bit uh, for a couple of minutes here because I've made actually made some changes to the presentation regarding the homework. So for your homework I ask you to complete all the activities from the video lecture and carefully write your answers in your assignment notebook. This is very important. You need to keep up with your assignment notebook. There's going to be a lot of things that you can do in there and we're going to talk about that. I want to talk quickly about the, the the last part here which is contact your partner by Kakao Talk voice chat and discuss together all the activities and speaking practices from unit one. I've gone back through the unit and I've highlighted in the color pink all of the things that you should talk about with your partner during your discussion with them on the Kakao Talk voice chat. So if you see something that's color pink, for example, who is someone you know who has an interesting life? I would like for you to discuss that in your Kakao Talk voice chats with your partner. Here are some ideas that you can talk about here. Talk with your partner about someone you know who has an interesting life. Use the sample conversation below to talk about them. So everywhere where you see pink in the presentation, this is something you can go through together and discuss these things together with your partner. So we talked a lot about these different things last week. I'm just going to go through these quickly. Talk with your partner about some interesting things that you've done in the past. So we would use the simple past verbs to talk about things that we did last summer or last year or two years ago or when we went on vacation. Using simple past verbs like traveled, saw, things that you ate, things that you did maybe crazy things that you did, interesting things. So talk about that with your partners as you're going forward. We talked about four different grammars. We're talking about simple, present, simple, past, present continuous, and the present perfect continuous, past continuous, and all of these different verbs are used together in different circumstances. You're going to get a lot of practice going through this as we get to the, uh, the different activities that you have to do for your writing assignments this week. But let's just quickly review. The simple present is used to talk about permanent situations or regularly scheduled events. I brush my teeth every morning. The simple past is used to talk about completed actions that happened at a specific time in the past. I brushed my teeth this morning. So these are things that happened in our daily life. And they're regularly scheduled events, things that we do every morning. Every morning I brush my teeth. Things that we did at a specific time in the past. It needs to have happened at a specific time, a time that we can talk about. That's what separates this from the present perfect. So the simple past is used to talk about completed actions that happened at a specific time in the past. So when we use the simple past, we'll often use it with these time expressions. This morning, yesterday, last week, last summer, in July. These are all different ways that we can talk about things, our experiences that happened at a, at a specific time. To talk about things that we're doing right now. I'm brushing my teeth. We're going to use am brushing, the verb to be plus the ing form of the verb. Those three verb tenses, the simple present, simple past, and present continuous, make up the majority of spoken English. Now, if we're telling a story and we want to talk about things that happened at the same time, we can use the past continuous to talk about layered events, what we were doing when something else happened. This is still going to be used to talk about something that happened at a specific time in the past. So to use the past continuous, it has to have happened at a specific time in the past. It still has to be a completed action, but we use the past continuous with 
the simple past to talk about when other actions occurred. What were you doing when I called? What were you doing when I called? I was brushing my teeth. So in the middle of the action of brushing their teeth, they received the call, okay? So we can talk about two things happening at the same time. Maybe I fell down when I was leaving the bus or I lost my phone when I was hiking. So we can talk about actions that happened during other, other longer actions. The present perfect is used to describe actions that took place at an indefinite time in the past when the time of the action is unknown or unimportant. Have you ever brushed your teeth in the shower? The present perfect is often used with words like before, never, just, in my life, and this week. Have you ever? This is the, in, the classic uh, present perfect question. Have you ever done something? Okay. So I have never brushed my teeth in the shower. We, this is something that didn't happen. Okay. It didn't happen in the past. So the time that it happened, obviously, if it didn't happen, is unknown. It, it hasn't happened. Okay. But what if we're talking about... Uh, Something, a long action like uh, it's often used with lived. Uh, I have I have lived in Korea for ten years, so we can talk about things like that. Next, the present perfect continuous. Describe events that started in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I have been taking a yoga class this semester. This is often used with time words like lately, recently, for five years, this year, this semester, since 2008, and etc. These are very important to remember. These, these words, that, these signal words, lately, recently, for five years, this year, this semester, since 2008. These signal to us that the action started in the past and is continuing in the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been taking a yoga class this semester. My yoga class started two months ago. It's going to continue now. It's going to continue into the future. So we have all of these different grammars that we can use. Here's another pink word here, partner practice. You can do these in your Kakao Talk meetings with your partner. Read the interview on page two with the class. Practice answering and answering the questions with your partner. Write down your partner's answer. Be sure to include the correct verb tense in your answers. After we finish, I'll ask some of you to tell what your partner said. Part A, interviews. We already went through this last week. There was an interview with student of the month, Melinda Cortez. How do you think the English department chooses its students of the month? You talk about this with your partner. Okay, talk with your partner about a time when you received an award. Very good. Okay, here's the grammar activity from page three. You need to complete this and write the answers in your assignment notebook. Okay, please complete the activities before you look at the answers. <laughs> And then I want you to practice answering and asking and answering these questions with your partner during your Kakao Talk voice chats. There's a lot of different practices that you can do in your Kakao Talk meetings. Using the simple present, verb tense, talk about how you organize your time carefully so that you have time to study and have fun during university life. Using present perfect verb tense ask and answer questions about social media use. For example, have you ever had an online argument with a stranger when using social media? Talking here about maybe Kakao Talk or some online chat room or Facebook or Instagram. I know sometimes I've got into arguments with people, usually about politics, sometimes about religion, but usually about politics. And I'll fight and say things on there, and I always feel bad about it later. So kind of made a rule for myself not to get into arguments with people I don't know on the Internet. Using the simple past verb tense.
talk about something that happened to you in the past that really changed your life in some way. I often give the example of my experience of looking for a job. About 12 years ago, I was looking for a job. I was a teacher in the United States, and I wanted to try to move uh, to maybe to a different city in the United States and, and start over and with a new life. At that time, I had a bad breakup with my girlfriend. I wanted to get away from her, and so I decided to find a job in another city. And I started to look online on an online job search website, and I saw an advertisement that said, Teach in Korea. And I clicked it with my mouse. My whole life changed completely as a result of that just one little finger click. Maybe I wouldn't have clicked it. You know, what if I didn't? Sometimes I think about that. What would if I didn't? Where would I be now? What would my life be like if I hadn't clicked that button at that time? But I did. I clicked it, and I quickly got a job. I quickly was able to move to uh, Korea and start my new life here, and I've been here for 12 years. It's hard for me to believe. But that's how one little mouse click can change your life completely. Talk about something that happened to you in the past that really changed your life in some way. Using the present continuous verb tense, talk about what you are doing these days to prepare your, lo your life for life after university. Jobs, relationships, leisure time, exp especially that. Okay, so present continuous. I am studying. I am... Uh, working. I am getting experience. I am uh, uh, applying for certification. I am training. Okay, so uh, there's different ways that you can prepare for life after university, for your professional life, for, for your personal life in some way. What are you doing these days to prepare for life after university? Talk with your partner. I'd say spend five to ten minutes on each of these questions as you're going through these. Using the present perfect continuous verb tense, talk about something that you have been doing for a long time. For example, I have been taking le piano lessons since I was three. You could talk about how long you have been studying English. How long have you been working out? How long have you been dieting? whatever you've been doing for a long time. Talk about it with your partner. I have been trying to lose weight for a long time. It's very difficult for me because I love to eat and I'm a good cook. So <laughs> it's really a perfect storm here, a d disaster area in my life in terms of trying to lose weight. Using the past continuous verb tense, tell a funny story about a time when you did something embarrassing. One time I was drinking with my friends. A lot of embarrassing things happened when we were drinking. I know that for myself, many times I did things that were funny or embarrassing or even kind of sad when I was drinking. Maybe you don't drink. That's fine. That's good. I don't drink anymore and I don't miss it. But if you uh, would like to talk about something that is embarrassing, what were you doing when the embarrassing thing happened? Okay, it might be something very simple. So spend about five minutes on each of those questions, practicing those verb tenses that we've been studying with your partner. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Lesson B, we went through this pretty quickly last week. When we have a complicated answer to a simple question, sometimes we begin by saying it's a long story. We had a story in the book about where, where this person named Dan went to South Korea. Uh, why did he go there? So you could talk about all these things with your partner. We're going to be using some of these different verbs, verbs with the, the verbs that go with the uh, two plus verb, the infinitive verbs that go with ing, verbs that go with a particle, or a preposition plus verb ing. You need to memorize these lists. 
happen to be, seem to be, bother to apply, decide to go, expect to get, offer to transfer, agree to pay. These verbs are not used with ing. They're only used with the infinitive to. You need to remember which ones are which. Spend. Spend three years working. Finish doing. Consider going. Remember thinking. Start working. Miss living. Imagine living. These verbs are used with ing, but they're not used with the to form. So we don't say imagine to live. We don't say uh, consider to go. Okay, so these verbs need to be used with the ing form. The only way you're going to get this right on the exam is to memorize the verb list. Okay, so if you don't memorize it, you're not going to get a good job. Okay, so the verb plus particle, preposition plus verb plus ing, end up living, plan on leaving. Some verbs are always followed by two plus verbs, and some verbs are always followed by verb plus ing. It's easy to see here which ones those are. After two word verbs, like end up, you need to use the verb plus ing. After verb plus prepositions, like plan on, you also need to use verb plus ing. So if you see two word verbs, these are called phrasal verbs, or if you have a verb plus a preposition, this is a collation, you need to use the verb plus ing with both of those, not the two plus verb form. Here is a activity four. You need to write the answers down for activity four. Page four, activity C, in your assignment notebook. Make sure you don't forget to complete all of the activities in your book in your assignment notebook. I'm going to check those. Page five, grammar activity A. Answer those questions. Don't look at the answers until after you've completed the, the questions from the book. Part 1, Section A, how did you end up studying here? I remember thinking, I decided to sign up. Well, I wasn't planning on learning. I offered to pay, agreed to come, keep on taking. So we could see here, some of these verbs are the verbs you use with the ing form. Some of these verbs are the verbs you use with the infinitive to form. We have a phrasal verb, keep on taking. It's a two-word verb particle collation with a preposition on. So we're going to follow that up with the ing form. Not keep on to take. Keep on taking. What are you thinking about doing? Thinking about. Verb plus preposition. We use the ing form. Started working. Started to work. This is a verb you can use either one with. Okay, so I would like for you to practice these expressions with your partner. Practice answering, asking and answering these questions with your partner. Talk about it. Why did you stop doing that? Practice using the grammar in lesson B by asking and answering the questions on page 5. Again, anytime you see the pink letters, these are things that you can do during your cacao talk with your partner. Open up the presentation. Just go through the presentation together and do these speaking activities together. You can also do the ones from the book. So let's talk a little bit about your homework again. Please complete all activities from the video lecture and carefully write your answers in your assignment notebook. Please complete all activities from Unit 1, Lessons A and B in the student book and carefully write your answers in the assignment notebook. Complete the vocabulary notebook and the extra practice pages from the student book in your assignment notebook. I have put these up here so you can look at these easily. You don't have to even download the PDF if you don't want to. This is the vocabulary notebook page. You just need to do this top part here. You don't need to worry about this down here. Just uh, this part right here. And this is the extra practice pages from the, the book for Unit 1. Complete these. Write down the uh, answers and the sentences. Don't just write down we're doing. Write down the whole sentence in your assignment notebook. Okay, I know that's a little bit extra work, but it's good for you. Help you learn something. Also, complete the activities from Unit 1 in the Touchstone 4 student workbook in your assignment notebook. 
So I've given you those here as well. It's kind of hard to read a little bit, but it'll focus here. This is lesson A. There's four different sections here for lesson A. And there's four sections for lesson B. Two sections. Three se Yeah, four sections. Okay? So complete these sections in your assignment notebook. I'm going to be checking those. Homework will be checked by me when we meet for the first time. I'm not going to tell you this again. Homework will be checked by me when we meet for the first time. I will have each group come to my office. I will check your assignment notebooks and I will check your cockout talk. Cockout talk with your partner. 20% of your grade for this class comes from your participation. Your participation score will be based entirely on the quantity, length, and frequency of your Kakao Talk conversations, voice and or video. Okay, this does not include texting. You need to call and talk to each other. I'm going to check. I'm going to look for something like this. I'm going to look at your phone. I'm going to say, show me your Kakao Talk. I want to see how much you talked. How, when you talked, what time you talked, how long you talked to each other. This is a phone call I made to Damien, teacher. Sometimes I call him to bother him. <laughs> he hates it when I call. And so I just keep him on there and talk to him for a long time. He thinks that's horrible, but too bad, Damien, teacher. I'm going to check this. How many should you do? More is better, but at least two 30-minute sessions per week. Talk more, get a better grade. Talk less, get an F minus. It's up to you. Okay, so I would say at least two 30 minute sessions, total of one hour. Okay, maybe you can talk more. Maybe you're lonely and bored and sad. And you want to talk a lot with your partner. Good. I would love to see that. I'd love to see you t talking. And, and, and when you're calling each other, talk in English. Don't speak in Korean. Just make it a rule. We're not going to speak any Korean at all. Okay, so that's how you're going to benefit from this. It's kind of hard to teach a conversation class online, okay? And I've really been trying to find ways to make sure that you're getting the conversation practice that you need. Simply learning the grammar isn't going to help you. We really need to push ourselves to speak quicker, to try to correct each other. So do your Kakao Talk practice conversations. This is the most important part of the class. I'm also asking you to do quite a few assignments in your assignment notebook. 20% of your grade from this class comes from homework and quizzes. Both of those scores will be assessed based on the completeness, the neatness, and the correctness of your assignment notebooks. So just get a little notebook like this. Touchstone 4, Student Book, Unit 1, Page 3, Activity A, and just write out the answers. Okay? I know it's going to take some time. We probably wouldn't do this if we had a regular class, but we just we, we need more practice than we're able to get. So I'm going to be asking you to do quite a bit of writing in your assignment notebook. This is very important that you complete this part of the assignment. Okay? Like I said, I'm going to be checking both of these things. I'm going to be checking your Kakao Talk records with your partner, and I'm going to be talk checking your assignment notebook. If you cannot contact your partner for Kakao Talk practice, contact me. If you have questions about the assignment notebook, contact me. I will be happy to help you as we go forward with this in any way. So if you need a, uh, a help with anything, if there's something you don't understand, if your partner won't talk to you, uh, if you hate your partner, whatever, uh, please contact me and I will help fix the situation. Okay? I want everybody in the class to have an excellent experience and to learn a lot. So let's stop for a second check our time. Okay, it's about 29 minutes. We've got about 15 minutes left. So I'm going to go ahead and begin Unit 2 now.
Touch Dome 4, Unit 2, Personal Tastes. Personal Tastes. What does this mean when we say personal tastes? Does this mean the way that a person tastes? No, not at all. We should not eat people, even babies, although they would be very delicious. I often tell people, if we crash into a mountain and you have the difficult decision of, of either eating somebody or dying, starving to death, you should eat Joe Teacher first. I'm going to be very delicious. I have a lot of delicious Samgyeopsal and Moksal, and I think that uh, given my, my high-carb diet that I'm going to just absolutely be delicious. Sometimes I wish I could eat myself. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about eating people. We're talking about taste. Taste means having the ability to describe, to think about what is good in terms of music, what is good clothing, what is good um, personal fashion, uh, uh, what is good in terms of delicious food, to know when you're eating delicious food and when you're not eating delicious food. So we're going to talk a little bit about personal tastes in Touchstone Unit 2. Unit preview. I just want to go through, before we start, I want to go through and look at some of the grammar that we're going to be looking at. First, we're going to be learning to make comparisons with not as something as, and we're also going to be learning to ask negative questions. Neither of these grammars are particularly uh, common. They are used regularly, but this is the kind of grammar that we're going to be studying in this unit. So. There's four different ways we can use not as, or three different ways. We can use it with adjectives, we can use it with noun phrases, and we can use it with adverbs. Okay, so let's go through these and look at some examples. We can say not as, or we can say as. Not as means not equal to. Okay, my heels are not as comfortable as my sneakers. So in that sentence, my heels are not as comfortable as my sneakers, we have the adjective comfortable. So which shoe is more comfortable, heels or sneakers? Sneakers. It says my heels are not as comfortable. My heels are less comfortable. We could say, my heels are not as comfortable as my sneakers, or we can say, my heels are less comfortable than my sneakers. Either way are two different ways of comparison. So we're look, compar comparing two things. So we're looking at the as-as comparison, okay? We can use less than or more than as another way of comparing, okay? My heels are just as comfortable as my sneakers, just as. So in this case, they're equal. The, the heels are as equally as comfortable as the sneakers. Same, same. Just as means same, same. Not as means less than. Okay? You could also say, my sneakers are not as comfortable as my heels. Okay? That would be kind of shocking if you had heels that were, that were more comfortable than sneakers. You could. Okay? Here's another form. I don't look as messy as I did yesterday, with an adjective messy, okay? Uh, you could also say, I don't feel as good as I did yesterday, with the adjective good, okay? I don't look, I don't feel, I don't seem. These are all different ways that we can talk about our, our own personal condition, okay? We can use any adjective we want. My heels are not as, uh, my sneakers are not as fashionable as my sneakers, okay? Fashionable is another adjective we could use here, okay? So there's many different adjectives we could use, of course, any adjective, really. Next, a noun phrase. We're going to use little and much. She spends as little time as possible. She spends as much time as possible on her makeup. You could say money. 
she spends as little money as possible on her makeup. So here's a noun phrase, little time, little money, much time, much money. She spends as much money as possible on her makeup. So we can change the noun. Notice we have possible after this, as little as possible, as little time as possible. Often these noun phrases are covered with, co are, are completed with possible. So uh, she doesn't wear as many bright colors as she should. Here's when we have an action verb. She doesn't wear as many bright colors. She doesn't wear as many fashionable clothes. She doesn't wear as many expensive items, okay, as she should. You can change those verbs, I mean the nouns in there, colors, okay. She doesn't wear as many expensive shoes as some other people do, okay. So there's lots of different ways we can use noun phrases in these constructions. Not as, adverb as. I tried as hard as I could to find the right dress. I don't like short hair as much as long hair. So much is an adverb used in this construction, and this is a very calm, common expression uh, to talk about our preferences. I don't like short hair as much as long hair. I don't like short hair as much as long hair. Notice that the as-as comparison is always followed by the noun phrase, my sneakers. A verb phrase, she should, or an adjective, possible. So we need to follow the as-as the, the comparison phrase with a noun phrase describing what we are comparing, a verb phrase, like she should, or an adjective, most often it's possible. Ask negative questions. The present form of the verb to be. Isn't that a great, isn't that jacket great? Aren't they expensive? This is when we want the other person to agree with us. We ask these negative questions. Don't you love it? Doesn't she like it? It looks good, don't you think? Sounds like we're trying to sell something, right? So we can use the simple present. We usually ask negative questions when we want someone to agree with our opinion about something, when we think the other person might disagree with us. Negative questions can be used to express an opinion. Isn't this jacket great? To suggest an idea. It would look good on you, don't you think? Or to express surprise. Don't you like it? I really thought you would like this. Warm up. As we said, taste. Taste is the ability to make discerning judgments about aesthetic, artistic, and intellectual matters. Discrimination. To have taste. Someone who has good taste understands what is beautiful. They understand what is artistically valuable. They understand what is true and what is not true. In other words, they can sense bullshit when they see it. Okay? Someone who knows that something is ugly, and they're not afraid to say that something is ugly. This is someone who has taste. Look at it. Look at the pictures on page 11 in your book and discuss it with your partner. What kind of music do you like? What kind of hairstyle looks good on you? What kind of clothes do you wear? What kind of car do you like? Let me give you some examples from my own personal tastes. Picture number one. What kind of music is that? That's jazz. I love jazz. I think it might be my favorite kind of music. I like jazz and classical. But I don't like some other forms of music. I don't like hip-hop as much as I like jazz. I don't like uh, some other forms of uh, uh, modern music. I don't really... 
I'm not a huge fan of K-pop. Uh, I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't, uh, I just don't get it. Uh, the, uh, there are other kinds of music that I love just as much as jazz and classical, for example. I really love alternative music. I also love uh, uh, electronic music. Picture number two, what kind of hairstyles look good on me? Well, I don't really have any hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I don't think a long, a longer hairstyle looks as good as m on me as a short hairstyle. I tend to keep my hair cut pretty close. Uh, what clothes do you wear? I don't like formal clothing as much as casual clothing. I usually wear, uh, I'm kind of an ajashi, I usually kind of wear hiking clothes. Uh, you know, right now I'm wearing Columbia cargo shorts and a Columbia uh, fishing shirt. Uh, so I usually keep pretty, pretty casual uh, unless I'm at school. And even at school I wear, I don't wear really uh, suits or anything like that, like Colwyn teacher. Colwyn likes to wear suits more than he likes to wear casual clothes when he is teaching. So if you know Col, if you see Colwyn, young Colwyn, he is always wearing a beautiful suit. I, 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 he always is so well dressed and handsome. I'm very jealous. He also has beautiful hair. What kind of car would you like? Well, I don't like cars as much as motorcycles. I see this is a beautiful blue BMW Boxster here in the picture. I don't like BMW cars as much as I like BMW motorcycles. I would love to have a BMW motorcycle. I have a Yamaha FZ6 that I really enjoy riding. So I would like for you to talk with your partner about these things okay when you do your cockout talk practice this week talk about these pictures talk about the music that you like talk about the hairstyles that look good on you maybe colors that you like to wear of your clothing what colors clothing do you wear what is your favorite style of clothing what are some clothes that you don't like okay so uh, and then what kind of car would you like to have okay and compare that to cars that you don't want to have Here's another talk about it for our warm-up. Do you think that you have good taste? Do you think that you're good at, at, at good taste? And maybe you have good taste in some areas and bad taste in others. Do you think that you have good taste in music? Do you think that you have good taste in fashion? Do you think that you have good taste in hairstyles? Do you have good taste in the types of things that you would like to buy? What area do you have bad taste or less taste in? Some people are really good at uh, buying clothes, but they're not so good at understanding what's good music. So, what uh, do you have a friend who has good taste? Talk about a friend that you think has good taste, and what area or areas do they have good taste in? Talk with your partner this week about your taste. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit. Well, we'll come to that next time. Okay, I think we're almost out of time here. Yes, we are. Uh, we just received news this week that uh, there's going to be an extra week uh, into week three of the uh, online classes, I would muchly prefer to uh, be in the classroom and it's my hope that we will be able to do that soon. I don't know uh, if that's going to happen, if it's even possible, uh, but uh, it is my fervent desire that we can get into the classroom as soon as possible. This uh, format, online teaching, is not my strength. I'm a classroom teacher. I love the classroom. I want to be in the classroom. I can't wait to meet you all, and hopefully we can get into the classroom soon. Um, I, uh, uh, 
I don't know what else to do, uh, you know, other than to just try to do my best here. 45 minute video lectures. Uh, this is way more than I would talk probably in a, in a normal classroom setting. In a normal classroom setting, you would be doing a lot more talking than I would, uh, which is why I really want you to do the Kakao Talk discussions. So work together with your partner to make sure that you're getting that conversation practice that is so important for you to be able to uh, uh, reach your goals as an English speaker. Okay, so we're going to continue with Unit 2 uh, in the next video lecture. I hope that you are enjoying these as much as I'm enjoying making them, and we will uh, talk soon. See you later.